anyway, it's a new day, a new journey, adventure in this journey. And um, I'll be sharing with you some more. So let's start with a meditation. So in every meditation, the aim is to experience. And if my thoughts stray, I just gently bring them back. Don't give any energy to it, but just lovingly bring them back. I sit with my back straight comfortably and bring my awareness into the moment. Observing everything in this moment as it is. Accepting it as it is. Observe the body and all the things around. The feelings of the body, the thoughts, and just accept. I relax the body, take in a deep breath, and let it out, and take in another deep breath, and then every inhale, I breathe in peace. And every exhale, I breathe out heaviness and tension. Breathe in peace. Breathe out tension. Breathe in light. Breathe out the dark. Breathe in light and let go. Of the darkness, the heaviness. I remind myself Everything in this physical world is temporary. Everything is changing. It's a journey. And I withdraw from this external world. and go to the invisible being in the invisible world. The being that resides behind the eyes that comes in the invisible world. Visitor. Being. It's me. 
speed up of subtle serene light. And is aware of the world beyond. Just enjoying the journey. Knowing this physical world is not his world. Easily moving on to each and every scene. Remaining light. Remaining free. Enjoying all the gifts. is free from some kind of attachment. Just being to be in peace the true self. Shanti means I am the peaceful soul. Bringing my awareness gently back to the physical, the body. And we can revise uh, some things from yesterday. So I have the picture here. Um, here we are smiling, enjoying, realizing that we're eternal. When we come into this world, we're physical, and then interacting with all these things as a traveler, as a guest. So we say I and my a lot because we forgot we are. We say, my body, but who is it that's saying, my body, the experiencer? We say, I am a doctor, I am a teacher, but it's not eternal, it's temporary. So we want peace and freedom. So we get trapped, the mind gets trapped into things that are temporary. And when we get trapped into the things that are temporary, we feel sorrow when it's not there any longer. And so we get dependent on these things and it's never enough because it never fills us because we know it's temporary and we just need more. And so we keep on getting trapped. And at the root of all this is that we just want to feel secure. So innately, we are secure. We are full. Everything we have that we need is within us. But when we forget, and we lose our identity and get trapped into identifying with the body, which is what is also changing. Very different body we had when we were small. So if I rely on what is constantly changing and unpredictable, 
and I keep chasing after those things, I will become exhausted eventually. So, everything is constantly changing. Back here. <clears throat> Everything in this world is constantly changing. And I want to feel secure, but there's the biggest fear, they say, besides public speaking, is death. So in everything in the world that is physical has a beginning and an end. And so if we're depending on those things, we are going to feel insecure. So you see here, I, and I hope you can see this okay, we call this ego identity, which is um, identifying with roles that I'm playing that are constantly changing. We identify ourselves with what is not real. And so we want to feel secure. And because we don't, then we have desires. And when the desires come in an uncertain situation, there's worry and stress and fear. When we have desires that are unfulfilled, there's anger and jealousy. When we have desires and we blame the self, there's low self-esteem, frustration, sadness, and guilt. So all of this is because we've forgotten who we are. We need to experience the self as the soul. And in this meditation, we are using spiritual insights that we have through focusing and thinking about these things, then bringing it into reality in myself. And I realize who I am as that spiritual being. And then there is naturally security because the soul never dies. The soul is eternal. The soul doesn't own anything. And so the soul can't lose anything. The soul is innately peaceful, loveful, blissful, joyful, pure, and powerful, and nobody can take that away. It's the truth of who I am. So we are eternal, we are immortal, we are naturally secure. We're on a journey in a world that is changing and undependable. When things happen and I'm attached to that outcome, then what happens if it doesn't turn out the way I want to? And I feel unhappy. If somebody I dear to leaves the body, there is sadness. But that one too is an eternal soul. That one too is a being on a journey. That one too is eternal consciousness. 
I think I could lose that. We can't lose anything. But it's deep inside what we call body consciousness, identifying ourselves with the body. It's deep habit. So again and again, I just bring in that awareness of being the traveler, the invisible one, the experiencer. And it's really very simple, but sometimes it takes a little time to realize. Sometimes it takes a little time to turn it to drop. But I keep bringing it back, I keep coming back to that awareness. But the root of everything is that I want to feel secure. So another aspect of feeling secure is that we need to know where we come from. So first we'll have another short meditation and just go into this again. So I turn within. Taking a deep breath. Relaxing the body. And accepting everything as it is. The soul is innately secure. Innately full. Innately free. Like a young newborn child. Totally pure. Totally innocent. Totally free. come into this physical world, enjoying everything, everything is so amazing, such an adventure, so much to learn. Keep traveling, meeting others, other souls, sharing, sharing my love, my happiness. We say, I mine, but the real mine is happiness, the real I is the eternal being. And along this journey, 
Eventually we forget and start getting a little bit caught into temporary things. We forget that we're soft. And the insecurity comes. And we want something not there. We forget that it's within us. We search and search that it's just right there. Just have to go within. and realize all we're really looking for is the self, the real self, the true self, the peaceful self, the being that is really joy. from the world of light. Oh, shit. So I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we're actors in a play. It's as though we're actors in a play. And actors have a home. We come into this play we play out our parts, we enjoy the drama, but where do we come from? So, sorry. Um, So Shakespeare said, we're all actors on the stage. So here's the stage. And here we are. Playing out our parts. And we come into this world And at one point, we will exit this world. Everything here has a beginning and an end. So the play comes to an end, and then we get to go home, take off our costume, relax, and be who we are. sitting over here so I get a perfect smile sorry <laughs> but it's a big smile here in the home there is a feeling of eternity it is unending pure light kind of a golden red light like the sunset and it is a 
place of absolute silence. There is complete, secure healing. There's no bodies, no costumes, just light and peace. Come and we enjoy the part. We play our roles to the best we can. And then it's just a role. It's just temporary. This world is actually very small compared to here. The feeling here is unending. Eternal. Eternal self in the eternal home. This is the home of all souls. It's a family of souls. And there's also one supreme soul. It unites us. So we're actors in the drama, and it's helpful to see that and to realize that because we enjoy films, we enjoy movies, the dramas. Even there's always a villain in the drama, but we can observe. It's temporary, and there's always a hero. So we are all acting together, interacting in a world of action. And then comes a time when we go home. So this home is total stillness, total silence. So we do another commentary and just enjoy. Again, turning within. The place of stillness inside. Drawing from all the external things. Realizing this being is the soul, the tiny star like image, point of light. behind the eyes, in the center of the forehead, this is the experience of the being, the living being, the being that gives life to the body. being has awareness, the thinking being, the conscious being, the soul that is eternal. Doesn't own anything physical, it owns qualities of peace, love, joy, that no one can take away, 
you tonight to take this core is there. There's a reservoir inside. Filled with peace. Inside yourself. Sometimes there's layers over that peace. It's there. It's what we search for. Because we know that peace. experienced it, that it's who we are. We know love, we search for love. That is actually who we are, we're beings of love. forget when we search outside. We are peaceful souls. And we've come to play our parts. <clears throat> In the home, it is as though the soul is floating. I'm sorry. <coughs> it's as though the soul is floating in a sea of peace. There's no costume. There's no body. There's no time, there's no roles, just silence and peace, surrounded by all the other souls, the family of souls, just being in that fullness. Pure purity of being our original truth. In the home of unending light. Absolute silence. And in this home, there is also one soul who is supreme, one soul that doesn't get caught into the play, one soul who remains eternally pure, eternally truth, eternally benevolent. parent of all souls. So we are a family of souls. We 
united by the one. We come into the play. Eventually we go back. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's okay? Good here? Okay? Good. Yeah. yeah. So just a reminder again that the four stages. <clears throat> so we can keep it simple and just think of the need. We want to re withdraw. <clears throat> I'm kind of losing my voice, sorry. <clears throat> We need to re withdraw in the beginning of our meditation. And then we want to choose a theme. And as we think on the theme, we become more concentrated. And eventually we go into the feeling, deep into the feeling. So I hope you are all able to experience that feeling of being detached and the feeling of being secure in the home. This is new information or something that's familiar. So we all have a memory inside of us and this is just waking up what we already know. This drama is a fast drama. So many things constantly changing, constantly shifting, but how to remain stable in the midst of it all is to come back to that place of peace inside, realizing who we are. It's unchanging, eternal. And just to keep reminding the self over and over again. So I'm wondering if there's any questions. I was going to say, uh, um, I've known these things. I, I recently got introduced to you and I couldn't be more on target because I guess I was familiar with these things in my head, in my intellect. And I was really in a chaotic swirl. And I found the mantra, Om Shanti, I am a peaceful soul. And I sat quietly because I'm really getting to know myself my the relationship with myself and um what i actually i really experienced it and even coming here it's the feeling and um reminding myself of that once i start to go to my habitual you know negative set ways coming back to that um it's hard to express. I'm just really happy I found you because I, I'm really feeling the feeling. And just in a few weeks, uh, there's a tremendous change already. So thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And I'm really glad that you're, you're experiencing that. This is a new class that we, as Brahma Kumaris, are sharing. And it's a little bit different and seeing that what people need in the world now is more to really come into that experience. And um, 
to just feel that security. And so it's also helping me as well. I've been, you know, it's kind of new for me sharing this. I've shared the lessons for a long time, but um, I'm really enjoying this too. <laughs> so um, thank you for your sharing. Anybody else have any question? Uh, I have a, a, a concern. <clears throat> uh, when I get to step four, I find myself kind of forcing the feeling instead of trying to open up and feel it. Can you help me? Can you give me some guidance as to uh, how to avoid trying to make me feel what I'm supposed to feel? Thank you for the question. Um, it is so natural for us to try to force things. So I'm definitely guilty of that myself. And I've learned that forcing things doesn't work. When I try to force something, I'm giving energy to that resistance. And um, it actually does the opposite. So just lovingly, gently, this is why understanding is so helpful understanding who I am, understanding how this works, understanding that force doesn't help, then I'm not trying to force away force. <laughs> it's just talking to the self, talking to the self. And I am lucky that I'm naturally a feeling kind of person. And it took a while to become more intellectual. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's a balance. And learning to feel is just that safe place to go inside and really check in. And just imagine if you're in a situation and we know that what love feels like, we know what peace feels like. We've been there, we know what pain feels like. So it's just opening up to that invisible being and going deeper and realizing that that love we're searching for, that peace we're searching for is inside. And then to try to experience that. And I can use many methods. Visualization uh, works well for me. Um, I can take it apart and see it from different angles and um, until it becomes familiar that it makes sense. And, that, and I love this understanding because it is so practical. You know, who are we really? We know we're more than just the body, but we've been living in that awareness for so long but the subconscious is, knows. And again, these are things that are invisible, the subconscious, you know, we, but there is a memory of everything. And so, but just all it is, is just pure spiritual positive thinking based on things that are real and true. And how I know they're real and true is I can experience. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Sir so Carolyn, um, to practice on a daily basis, is there any guided meditation or recording from? Yes, I sent last night. It was the um, it was a little bit an hour or so after the program. Um, I sent some commentaries to everyone, and there was one person whose name was Gyro, who um, I wasn't able to get through to. So I'll try to call you and um, see what happens. But okay. everybody else should have received them. And okay. if you haven't, let us know. Um, they go along with this particular course. And yes, I didn't receive it. Um, I didn't know if uh, I didn't check my spam folder, but it shouldn't be in spam because I believe you're in my contacts now. 
but I could put down my email. Why don't you just tell? Um, yeah, why don't you send it to Put us? it in the chat. Put the okay. input, please. Sure. Thank you. And I'll Thank send you. It. I think I received it. I will check it out. Sorry, I didn't uh, go through. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. So anybody else? I, I sent uh, my email to Sister Padilla, okay? The Jairo L, okay? Yeah. I already sent her the email to Sister Padilla, okay? Okay, because whatever I had, I sent it and it said that it was blocked or something. I forgot. Um, unable to, to get through to it, but it wasn't like it wasn't there. It was there, but it was kind of not working. Anyway, Om Shanti says, I have a question. Feeling of a guilt and fear, how do you come over that? Well, this world, there's either fear or there's love. And when I'm realizing I'm the soul, there's naturally fearlessness and love, but it takes time. So it's realizing who I am that helps a lot. Fear, F. False evidence appearing real. So the identity that we're using is an identity that is based on the roles that we play, the things that we own, the way that we look, and all these things are temporary. So as long as I'm believing that, there's going to be fear. And it's subtle, it's deep inside of us sometimes. So it just is a constant coming back and reminding myself and becoming more aware and aware. And you see it start to dissipate. And the other thing you mentioned, fear and what else was? Guilt. Guilt. Guilt, when I am not in a place of that truth and that honesty inside the self where I'm caught into things I'm it's when I need something I want to feel secure and I don't feel secure and blaming the self, then I feel guilty. But I'm not guilty. It's just part of this drama. We get trapped. We forget who we are over time. In one lifetime, a little child, so free. But it's just natural. We grow older. We get more complicated. <laughs> and we forget. So it's nature. But when I come back to that awareness of what is true, and then I talking to the self in a way that is true. And gradually, gradually, I can let go of those things. Okay. In a day-to-day -day life, though, so, and when you're trying to achieve a certain productivity or a goal, say it work, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't meet that goal because of time restrictions or physical ability to do it. And then you feel guilty at the end of the day when you're trying to summarize what you achieve. And then you feel guilty. Oh, I couldn't do this because of this. So how do I come over that? that guilt and still try to make it achieve that goal next time without feeling guilty. Yes. Um, 
I know I've been there myself. Um, it's really, you know, we do the best we can. We can only do so much. And if I'm constantly hurrying and racing, trying to meet somebody else's demands, and I do, you know, I need money, I need a job, I need, so there's all that involved in it. But when I realize the self is a soul and my intentions are really good, then that guilt just shouldn't be there. I'm doing the best I can. I'm honestly doing the best I can. And whatever the other person is trying to press on me, you know, if I get trapped into that, then I'm just wanting to please them. But I, it's, it's more about having that self-respect inside myself, knowing I'm okay, <clears throat> and then giving good wishes and pure feelings out. Otherwise, it's like everybody has our remote control. <laughs> and we want to please. And we can't please and we feel guilty. So it's not easy, <laughs> but it's just a, a learning and a, a gradual process. So does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. And I do try to remind myself that I can't please everybody but still at the end of the day, I feel like I have not achieved, I'm not making, uh, bringing happiness to people around me because I can do, I can perform. But you see the um, people that you're trying to make happy, if they're only happy because of the, the amount that you perform, then they also don't realize who they are. So the best gift I can give to the world, really, to my office, to wherever I am, to my friends, to my family, is to transform the self, to get back to being peaceful and loving. And then my performance will also get better. And there was uh, somebody who came here once that had a high position and he said he decided to make everybody in his office happy. <laughs> and he found that by doing that, by giving that love and that appreciation, that everybody performed incredibly well. Oh, okay. And so it's seen the bigger picture. And I also would like to encourage you that after this class, we have one more lesson, but there is a Another class, it's six sessions, and it goes into a little bit more deeper, a little bit more deeper understanding of how this all works. Okay. The main thing is to realize the soul. And I'm actually a good person. Inside, I'm a beautiful person. Inside, my intentions want to make everybody happy. And I can only do what I can only do. And so just love the self. Okay. And can you send us the link for those other classes? Yes. Um, actually, those classes, um, well, I'll give this to you now. I'm going to give it to you tomorrow, but there, here. I did write down. <clears throat> Here we are. So this is if you have any questions when the class is over, you feel free to send me an email. You probably okay. have this if you receive the yes. commentaries. Um, and I'm happy to reply. But also I encourage you to the, do this other class. And I believe it starts on December 2nd. And it goes for three days. I think it's consecutive days. I don't know the exact timings, but you can find out all about it. Um, it's on our website, Anabuti. And this is um, www.anabuti, A-N-U-B-H-U-T-I, retreatcenter.org. Okay. 
Okay. So all, information, all the wonderful programs we have are right there. Okay, I'll go check it out. Thank you. Okay. And can you repeat the word fear when you wrote it on the, there? It was false. False evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. I think we've reached our time. So we'll um, have a few minutes of... Thank you very oh, much, Om Shanti. I'm sorry, actually, we have till a quarter after. Um, normally, this is an hour, but we put an extra 15 minutes. <laughs> so if anybody has any more questions, feel free. No more questions? Somebody going to share? Okay, maybe we'll just have a couple minutes of silence. Just withdraw the attention from the outside world and journey within. Visualizing star. The invisible being that is consciousness and light. And the home of light. Feeling is eternal. Eternal world, eternal soul. Being of peace. In a world of silence. A beautiful being, a being of goodness, benevolent. And I keep coming back to that awareness from time to time. I carry it with me as I go through my journey. Om Shanti.